listen guys, I'm not gonna say that I'm speechless. Yes, because that hasn't happened yet in all my life. But let me tell you, when I started this channel over six months ago, not in my widest dreams I could imagine that I've reached 20,000 subscribers. But here we are. We stand at over 23,000 subscribers. <gasps> Unbelievable! And yes, this YouTube journey of mine is part experiment, part self-discovery, part self-gratification and part a massive exercise in narcissists. But it is also hard work because I come up with all the ideas. I don't follow any social trend. I don't prepare a script. Most of what I'm saying is improvised around some ideas of the things I want to say, the objects I wanted to present. And so I can only say thank you, thank you, thank you for being so kind to support me all these months. And now, if you want to go one step further, you can now buy me a coffee. No, really, I mean it. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash impertinent collector and buy me a coffee to keep me fully caffeinated for the next episode. Regardless, thank you for being here with me wherever you are in the world. But now, back to our regular broadcasting. In the early 1970s, my mom had decided to open an antique shop in this city in northern Italy, in the Veneto region, north of Venice. A rather nice city and a rather wealthy city. And in a matter of few years, she had made a reputation for herself. Customers would flock from all over the world and from all over Italy, certainly. And among them, they were like art dealers and collectors, ambassadors and conductors, actors from the TV and from the theaters, but also industrialist. And among this group of people that were very much looking to see what my mom had brought back to the shop for one or her latest trips overseas, there were few members of the Italian aristocracy. Yes, and nobody embodied the qualities that you would expect from an Italian aristocrat, a true gentleman with a title to his name. Then the character at the center of this episode. And as always, when I mention real people, you will grant me the liberty to change his name for the sake of this tale. And so we would call him Il Signor Mascara. Yes, even if when he first introduced to my mom, he presented himself as Il Conte Mascara della Bella Frasca. <gasps> What a title! And in the eyes of my mom, he had all the credentials. 
Yes, because he had an, an aristocratic title that would back his lineage all the way down to a Medici pop. He had a country estate in Tuscany and he had a palazzo, even if just the piano nobile, in the center of Florence. To me, when I first met him, I was 10 years old and he came up as the most charming man that I never met, a client of my mom. He was medium size with a relatively large waist, but not too much, you know, a bit of what we called a lifestyle belly in Italy. And he was always, always immaculately dressed without having been over the top. But when I saw him in the shop, he would always have the courtesy of spending few minutes chatting to me. He would squat, come down to my heart and ask me, ah, little Davide, what is going on in your life? He made a fabulous impression from the first moment. And of course, for my mom, he was a true gentleman, always asking, Oh, Victoria, show me something nice, show me something different. And my mom would open the drawers and show him some 18th century ivory, some very old cameo, some book of esoterics meanings and sometime he had a passion for all material related to the Freemasons. That who he was, Il Signor Mascara, or as we like to call him, Il Conte Mascara della Bella Frasca. And he would buy anything that piques his fancy with great ease without ever negotiating because for him asking for a discount would be beneath him but what made il signor mascara particularly valuable to my mom over the years is that as their relationship developed, he turned from being a buyer to being a seller on behalf of some of his aristocratic friends too busy with life or too shy to admit that they were short of money. And that was very much a normal things to happen because he's notoriously known that old money is asset rich and cash poor. And sometimes the Signor Mascara would ask my mom, oh please Victoria, if you don't mind not to show the item openly in the shop, but only to show it privately to some discerning collector better if at your own place. And my mom, of course, was more than happy to oblige. Now, the Signor Mascara would always announce his arrival two or three days before, and the whole house would turn into a frenzy. Yes, because regardless if he was too busy, if he had other plans, or if something was arranged at the last minute, we had to be ready to have Signor Mascara for lunch. 
and so all the silver wares have to be polished. The finest tablecloth and napkins have to be ironed to perfection. And of course, the most expensive Murano glass with the gold leaf inside have to be taken out from storage and polished and clean, ready for a lunch that many times didn't happen. But that's who this guy was. And this relationship with the Signor Mascara has gone on for something like over 15 years. And one day my mom received a friendly call from his wife. Yes, la Contessa Mascara della Bella Frasca wanted to have a private audience with my mom. And she was quickly in promptly accepting the lunch that came with her arrival. And she arrived by herself and she shared with us the sad news that the marriage was now unraveling and that they had marital problems for many, many years. But now it was definitely, definitely over. And my mom asked, oh, and what's going to happen to Il Conte Mascara? And the Countess gracefully, but not less viciously, declare there is no Conte Mascara della Bella Frasca. The title is mine and he has used it through all these years in order to gain access to the most respected families in Italy. Oh no, oh, such an elegant man, such a man of exquisite manners. Yes, but there is more. This man always had expensive taste and he had no money of his own. He spent all the money like there was water, all the time buying, buying, buying. But there is more. In the last few months since I told him that our marriage was over, I started to notice that a number of items from the home, from the Palazzo in Flores and from the country house were now missing. And I suspect that he is starting to hold them in order to sell them later on. <gasps> Yes, imagine, cara Victoria. Even the exquisite Bulgari watch that I bought for him on our first year anniversary, even that one is missing. You go figure, you live your life with a man all your life, then you discover that is not the man you should have spent more than a weekend together in Portofino or in Capri when you were both young. But you know, he charmed me and he was a charmer. But now I can't stand him anymore. <gasps> of course, the poor Contessa Little did she know that the precious Bulgari watch had been sold at least 10 years prior and that Il Signor Mascara had plunged the household of the precious heirlooms. For years and for years he had supplied my mom with artifacts that made my mom's reputation in the art world. 
as somebody who could discover and obtain through a secret sources the most unbelievable items at very good prices too. And the Bulgari watch, when my dad starts going down with Alzheimer, my mom decided to gift to me. And she said to me, please only wear it in special occasions. And what better occasion that this YouTube video? And who cares about the watch that comes and goes? What happened to Signor Mascara, now downgraded from Count to a mere Signore? Oh, what happened to his tailor-made shirt that he would have exclusively made for him in Naples? The shoes custom made for him in St. James in London. The suits made for him in Savile Row. The coats only made by Loro Chiana in Milan. How could he possibly replace them and keep up his extraordinary wardrobe? Well, he disappeared after this meeting for a couple of years. And then one day he, unannounced, appeared in the shop and asked for a little loan to my mom. My mom was more than happy to oblige. And then another year passed and he reappeared again, still charming, still nicely dressed, but you could see that the clothes were no longer brand new. He still he had a way to wear clothes that was exquisite especially when you are dealing with everything that is tailor made. It fits you perfectly, even after 20 years. And he has his own patina, his own charm that makes you really look and sound and feel like old money. But in Signor Mascara, ask my mom for more money. But this time, because he had decided to pick up on an old passion of his since I was a kid. He had become a painter. But in this characteristic fashion, he would paint on big canvas with the most exquisite and expensive colors that have to be made for him with the right mix, with the right ingredients, with the right oils. And my mom gave him the money. And then one day he started appearing with the canvas. This magnificent role asked if my mom could possibly be interested in purchasing some because unfortunately for unforeseen circumstances, the money had run out. And my mom, of course, obliged and bought the canvas of now what for all of us was a Signor Mascara. What an extraordinary character and what a story. I know as a fact that he died few years ago, his daughter called my mom and she said, I have few items to sell that my mom left me because my dad had nothing. He had sold everything. But my dad, when he was dying, he told me, if you ever need to sell something that mom has left you, only trust 
Victoria. Call her and tell her that you are my daughter. She will for sure cut the most elegant deal. And my mom did. She went to see her in a small apartment in the center of Florence, full with paintings from the floor to the ceiling, but nothing compared to the splendor that this old Medici family was used to. So, this is the story of Signor Mascara and the Bulgari watch that grace my wrist in special occasion, like this one here. Signor Mascara, you are my legend. Ah.